Welcome back, it's Kyle with All In Survival. And today we're gonna to talk about ballistic helmets. The one I have sitting in front of me is Hard-Headed Veterans ATE Gen 2. I'll talk a little bit about why, as a civilian, we might wanna have one of these, and some applications, costs, and some of the features I've added to this one. All right, so the first thing I wanna get into is, I get the fact that having a helmet and rolling around while you're out just shooting might be kind of like tactical ninja type stuff. And I get it. Uh, everybody's gone to the range and seen that one guy that's way tacked out and there's no particular reason for it. However, as we've watched over the news, things change really quickly. You can find yourself in a hot zone very quickly. Having this type of equipment, having body armor, having an LBE, having a battle belt, having a helmet, having the right firearms, magazines loaded, everything, it all plays in together, right? There are going to be times, there could be times that it's necessary. And if you haven't and you haven't used it, trained with it, these are issues, right? So the best thing you can do is slowly start procuring equipment that's high end, best that you can do. Now, like I just said, best you can do for me is I couldn't afford to roll out and buy a Tim, Team Windy or one of the higher end brands. I went with a very solid brand that's that's got a lot of great reviews, but it's a midline helmet. The helmet comes in right around $500. This is ballistic rated. They've done all the testing. Everything is already done for you. What I chose to do is buy the helmet and then do the add-ons, right? The things that I felt um, are going to make it from an average helmet into something that I'd be willing to wear. Um, I will get into the five or six things that were done here in just a minute, but you first have to start with, can you see there being a scenario where you might want or need a helmet? Then do your research. Um, there are several great brands out there, and I'm not going to go ahead and name through them all, but it's your responsibility to do your research. Make sure that the ballistic, if you're going to go with ballistic, and I would say that you should, uh, make sure that the testing's been done and it's legit. In general, if you go on YouTube, there are dozens of guys that will get free helmets from these companies and they'll shoot the hell out of them. Uh, you can't go wrong with just watching some of that stuff and deciding. Now, these will not save your life in every situation. Uh, just as it is when I was overseas, we did not have these type of helmets. We had the full Mitch that went just about all the way over your ear. Um, there, were, there were a couple guys while I was in country that the bullet had hit the head and it did not even penetrate all the way and it broke their neck. So velocity, angle, and all of that stuff will have play an impact. However, your head is the first thing that's going to round the corner um, when looking for a target and uh, I would rather have it than not have it. So, all right, so let's get into the five things that I went ahead and upgraded on this. All right, the first thing that I added on to this was a ballistic, the mesh cover for the ballistic helmet. Um, I like the fact that um, I could weave some brush and cover in there if I'm uh, out in the field. Uh, it takes some of the glare off of, this is painted uh, multicam, but it's a little bit shiny for me. And I, I wasn't totally thrilled with the shiny aspect of it. Uh, but this this helps a lot. Um, two, I went ahead and added uh, the Wilcox G24 and um, 
the J arm that has the automatic shut off for my my knots. On the back, I went with a Team Windy ratchet system, and um, by far, this is one of the biggest upgrades that you can do for your helmet. Now, um, I have seen a couple of the hard-headed uh, veterans' helmets come with this, but mine did not, so um, I went ahead and added that. The ratchet system was about a little over $100 and it took about half an hour to put in and it's one of the best upgrades that you can do. Um, number four is I went ahead and got a, a battery or counterweight. Um, so the counterweight is here uh, and it's just enough weight to give you a balance. Now I run a monocular and that's, that's already pretty light. So I didn't need much. Um, I have enough batteries for two changes of batteries in the PVS-7s and the PAC-15 is a different type of battery and uh, there's two sets in here. So it's not a lot of weight. Um, I'll go ahead and bring this around. Last but not least, the big one of the best ink is this new lattice system from Hard-Headed Veterans. I say that this is probably one of the best inventions that's uh, been made for helmets in a very, very long time. This is plush, comfortable, and airflow. <laughs> Anybody who's spent a lot of time in these helmets knows that, uh, especially somebody like me who sweats like crazy, getting any kind of airflow is, is very hard with those nice pillow pads. And this makes a huge difference. I wore it around the house the other day, just messing around, and it's super comfortable. And I cannot wait to get this out and start running it like crazy. So we'll go ahead and put this back on Bob. I want to put the links to all of these products in the description, and you can check them out for yourself. Now, let's go back to why you might want to have these. Now, if at nothing else, it's a solid platform for night vision. If you want to own the night, it's there's nothing better, to be honest. When in defense of your family and your home, you're going to use the best equipment available. There's no doubt that everybody has their opinions of what the best equipment is. But if you want to have the ability to have a force multiplier, night vision is one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself. Uh, not turning the lights in, on in your house until the very last minute when you need to make a solid identification before pulling that trigger is a plus. The helmet can be a very solid platform for that. And do I suggest everybody have one of these on your nightstand? Maybe not. Um, but if you can afford it, why would you not? So if I had to clear the house in the middle of the night, um, slapping one of these on, dropping down your night vision and clearing the house without turning on any lights, um, that is a very big force multiplier. So is the average person going to do that? No. And I wouldn't suggest just everybody going ahead and doing that without getting some solid training. Uh, but it is a force multiplier. There is zero doubt about that. It will take an average shooter and turn them into owning the night. I'd say three, at least three, three on one. So defense of your country, your neighborhood, and your family. Well, it's always been my opinion that if you're a able-bodied citizen, that you should have a Minuteman kit. And in this uh, series that I've been doing, basically I've been laying out the reasons why you should have one. Everything that's here is probably over $1,200, but you could spend $1,200 just the helmet before making any adjustments. And do I suggest that? 
for the average person? No, not necessarily. This is a solid helmet. This is a good, a good piece of kit. So, uh, if you have the funds to go out and buy a Team Windy, Opscore, or uh, one of those higher end brands, do so if you can. But don't skimp on the other stuff. The other stuff makes it usable, right? So, all right. Well, if you have any questions for me, by all means, hit me in the description or in the comments. By uh, I actually enjoy getting those. Uh, if you've made it to this point, uh, thank you. And uh, as always, stay safe out there.